This is a live interpretation for Mr. Kabyong Ryong Song Level 8 during his North American tour on March 21st, 2020, happening in New York. Please enjoy the following clip. So, since I am the only level 8 in the world, I can easily call myself as the youngest level 8, can't I? So I'm, I'm actually just a little bit faster than Miss Song, who was just introduced before. Uh, so, so, if she becomes level 8, she, she might become uh, the youngest, but at the moment, I still hold the title of being the youngest, and I'm glad to do so. So, not just me. There's also Mr. Kang in Korea who just became a level seven, but they're all living such humble lives. And just like that, even though I am living this very humble, simple life, just because of this one difference in methodology that I chose, my entire life has changed. And perhaps that's why I'm here trying to tell you and give you and explain to you about this opportunity. And this could be this stage where I get to do that in front of new new members today. So the trophies that were given to level six and level seven to Miss Han and Miss Song, they're, they're extremely heavy. The reason why they're so heavy is because they have to really understand the weight that comes along for being the top tier members of this business. This business is not just about a simple investment opportunity because if it was just that one simple investment opportunity, I don't think we would have come all the way here. It's not just about receiving the returns from investment. It's about understanding of being a frontier, the mentality of a frontier, of a person who goes for the first. So what does it mean to be a frontier? Just because when we were discovering America's it's about discovering the K contents, the K stadium. K stadium is about telling the blockchain content that is K stadium that hosts the current contents that is a blockchain based content platform to the world. We've been hearing a lot of things like, we've been hearing a lot of negativity against the KOK and the K Stadium. And a lot of people who've tried to be the frontiers of K Stadium have had a lot of negativity being faced trying to explain what K Stadium is. And it's been a tremendously hard and worrying and concerning times for those frontiers. However, we have come all the way to this point where those roads have led to yet here I am on this stage with all the success that K Stadium has. And also, as a frontier, because we have created this road that a lot more followers can lead, and in the end, making sure that the road that we pave for the future is one that can be actually followed with the true mission at hand, that is one of the reasons why, to implicate that responsibility behind that, we made the trophies very heavy. Now, we got, we're running a little late in terms of time, so why don't we get started right away and talk about the main things that I'm here to tell you. The main business tour that I'm here trying to explain to you is about, is about trying to explain a little bit further ahead than the previous ones that I was participating. Previously, when I was in America, I explained about the basis of K Stadium, but now we're talking about the next steps the first thing you can see on the screen is that K-Stadium, it's launching its mainnet. Now, in the blockchain world, what is a mainnet? All the blockchain projects and technologies and, and all the blockchain-based technologies out there, their final goal, their final objective is always mainnet to create their own mainnet and launch it. What is a mainnet? Mainnet, it's, their, it's a basically short form of main network. It's a network created based on a blockchain technology, but it is created for their own platform. So it's their own network. So what about before then they had their own? What did they do? A lot of the companies borrowed the technology. I know you all know about Ethereum, don't you? I know Bitcoin is like the father of cryptocurrency. A lot of people say that. It's, it's like a pronoun that we use, but Ethereum is like the father of altcoin or technology coin, the father of all technological coins. And right now, if there are really two really types of cryptocurrencies in the world, there's Bitcoin and everything else, everything else, we call it 
altcoin or alternative coin. And the number one in all the alternative coins in the world that has been proven and has been accepted as the next contender is Ethereum and their technology, their blockchain is called the ERC20. And many of the blockchain companies basically borrow their technology to base their network. Now, what does it mean to borrow this technology? We are basically an application, like the applications that you have on your phones. You can just think about that, and that's probably the easiest way for you to understand. Because with the applications alone, you can't actually run anything. You need some kind of system for the application to live on for it to actually work. What do we call that system? We call it an OS or an operating system, like an Android or an iOS. Be because these operating systems work, the applications work on top of them. This is the metaphor that I'm trying to use. Android and iOS is basically the mainnet functionality in a blockchain. Just there's really only two big OSs across all around the world. And that big of an achievement is what the like, blockchain companies are trying to become as well. So there's a website called CoinMarketCap that tries to analyze all the exchanges and the cryptocurrencies all across the world. And every day they rank all the exchanges and the cryptocurrencies of the world. And everybody in the world, most of us, we usually make our decisions on which exchanges or which cryptocurrencies to use or be part of by looking at the rankings at CoinMarketCap to understand what kind of future value they have, what kind of prospects they have, and what kind of technology they have. And right now, Coin Coin Market Cap says there's about 18,000 different cryptocurrencies tabulated as data all across the world. And but those are just the coins that are listed on Coin Market Cap. Not all cryptocurrencies can be listed on Coin Market Cap. There's actually thousands and thousands of more because only the coins or the tokens that have been verified and certified by Coin Market Cap can be listed there and can be ranked amongst the safe cryptocurrencies of the world. Even the KOK token, we actually try to list ourselves on Coin Market Cap, but we actually have to wait for a very long time for our data to be tabulated there because they actually kind of work like a compliance program because they are basing their entire information system on the basis of good reputation. So among the 18,000 cryptocurrencies up there, do you know how many projects have their own mainnets, basically coins? The rest are all tokens and only 50 of the 18,000 are coins. So tokens are the ones that do not have their own cryptocurrency blockchain network. So coins and tokens differ in that way. If you have its own technology, you become a coin. But if you borrow somebody else's technology, you're considered a token. It's basically a landlord and tenant issue. So mainnet, if we launch that right now, it's been two years and a half since K Stadium started. It took about 2.5 years for us to get here but a lot of work, a lot of money, investment, time and effort has come across just for us to be able to launch mainnet. And this point on, and when we launch mainnet, we are about to rebrand ourselves, marking the point of the mainnet launch. From KOK, we are now being known as K Stadium. Before we used to be KOK Play, play like Google Play, Coupang Play, like a playground, some place to play. But where do we play? In a, in a playground, don't we? That's where we basically do our pay. But well, we took that a step bigger into a stadium, like a coliseum, so that why don't we make a bigger concept of play and to in, enclose all meanings of play. And this um in stadium is based on Ethereum. That's one way that you can see where that name came from, because our KOK token is a transacting token. It's a bit different than Ethereum. Ethereum is, it's basically created so that it be utilized on the blockchain network of the Ethereum network. But what are we? We are a utility coin. We're a coin for the consumers that people can use as payments. And, and that's how it was created. However, but to go one step ahead of Ethereum, to make it even cheaper transaction fees, we want to take 
impact on the world with those missions at hand. Now, if you look at this symbol, it actually visualizes a bull. What is a bull? If you go on Wall Street right now in New York, you see the charging bull. And the bull has always been a representative of, of rising money in like stock markets and cryptocurrencies. What do we call markets that go up? A bullish market, right? So, so a lot of Koreans will say, what is a bullish? Oh, people, Koreans will say, oh, it's bull like fire in Korean. No, it does not represent that. It represents like Chicago bulls. It re represents the bull. So then, so we call it a bullish for something that goes up. What do we call something that goes down? Bear, a bearish market. What's a bear? It's a bear. Why? Why is it a bore? Why is something that goes up a bull and something goes down a bear? It's because a bull, of course, it represents money and assets, but it also fights by hitting up. It always attacks up. Therefore, it goes up. But what about a bear? It basically stands. It always hits downwards. So that's why from those words, that's where the bear market and the bull market comes from. So then for us, we want to utilize this logo of the bull to represent money and also to represent its rise throughout the time that is about to happen. But as we are trying to rebrand from KOK's main net, we have changed our name from KOK to K Stadium, but the heritage, the mission, the brand that was KOK actually lives on. And as you can see in the middle is the crown that lives on in the middle. What is a crown? It basically represents the top, the ruling class. And as you can see, it's a three-pointed crown. And why does it have three crowns? The one point is user, like our, us, the frontier. The second is the content developers. And the third is, is the platform company or the platform maker. So KOK, the foundation or the medium foundation. So then, in other words, these three points represent FAIR. That's our slogan, FAIR. Share, to share, enable, and to make it enable, to make it possible. So to be able to fairly distribute wealth, that is the big mission. And with that mission at hand, with our brand, and what do we call, where do you see that? Are there anybody who studied, where do you see this? It's, a call, it's all about the protocol economy that I'm about to explain to you further, go on, so on after this point. Protocol economy is about, it's about incentivizing everybody part of that community and the network that is inside that network and, and distributing the wealth and assets in a fair manner. But to actually do distribute in a fair manner, you actually do require some kind of technology, don't you? The biggest mission for this business seminar is, of course, to let everybody know of mainnet, but it's about the progress that the foundation is having right now. Right now, we've already decentralized outside of Korea, but we want to become from rookies to aces, but the people, the users who are participating on, on this foundation, the frontier, perhaps the word frontier right now, even still now, there's still a few of us who don't really understand K Stadium and who just simply understands the K Stadium model as just a simple way of making profits, getting returns out of an investment. So that's why we keep getting words such as a, a network-based or multi-level network-based cryptocurrency scheme, but it isn't that. We need to try to actually properly understand the theme of K-Stadium. And what I want to do throughout this business seminar is to let you guys know that. Before we get started, why don't we get to the current events? What's actually happening in the world? So Biden, President Biden, He actually let the public know how he's going to change a, a historical change. 
Why was it a historical change? And that historical change refers to Joe Biden's new methodologies going towards, seeing towards cryptocurrency in America. And before this, this moment, not everybody was able to touch in the market that it was cryptocurrency because what with one false move, cryptocurrency could really bring the crash of the US dollar. So, but however, here we are. As you can see, even the presidency, because the entire world works, if the environment wants it, if the people wants it, then the government has to follow. So to match the flow of time right now, that is why Joe Biden said we will, if it's short in 60 days, within 60 days or 180 days, all accounting, all the public institutions related to the United States will, will try to find regulations to accept cryptocurrency as a form of currency. It's quite a historical moment. All right. Oh, and what about Korea? What's happening in Korea? So in Korea, they're trying to, with the new president voted in this March, the new president stated that he will institutionalize the usage of cryptocurrency. Korea is the front leader of IT. And, and that country that is the leader of IT and the country that has the biggest shares of cryptocurrency, America, these two are now leading the way, changing the history into cryptocurrency where the government is accepting cryptocurrency. But I promise you, before this moment, the entire world was against, the, all of the government governing bodies of the world was against cryptocurrency. They did not want to have cryptocurrencies to be actually supported in a government level. So many of the blockchain companies actually tried to create their companies offshores and offseas because they couldn't find support from the government. But why is the new president, President Yoon of Korea, why is he making these changes? As I told you just before, it's because, because we cannot fight against the flow of time, the flow of the trend, the trend that is the time of the people. We cannot go against that. Nobody can go against that. So that is why images like this, maybe a, a, a while ago, a lot of people had, there was a lot of people per, perhaps a couple of months ago saying like, oh, could, would, would that actually become possible? Would cryptocurrency actually be the next currency? Is that true? Would it really be realized? A lot of people ask this question, but now we've already come to the point in time where we have to accept it, no longer question it. But still, even at this point, a lot of people, I'm not talking about a small amount of people, a lot of people are still trying to go against cryptocurrency, even though the times have changed. So, so we call it the Bible of, oh, he said, the illiteracy of the modern man, it, it doesn't mean somebody who cannot read or write. An illiterate modern man means a person who is not able to accept new information from the civilization. That is the modern illiteracy. It's basically times are changing, but you are not changing. But really, the way that our times are changing so fast, things are changing way too fast, especially during COVID. And even think about our lives after COVID-19. I feel like with the one to two year progress that our times have is basically the 10 years of progress that we've seen before. And these changes are happening fast. So that means we also have to change quickly and adapt to the situation. So let's ask the question, why is Bitcoin out here? Why is there cryptocurrency? Why did it come up? It's because it's better in some sort of way than the currencies that we use before. For example, let's say the heavy coins that we had, it was too heavy to carry. So we did paper money. So paper money was easier to carry, but even paper money wasn't easiest or most convenient to carry around. So we made credit cards that we can literally bring unlimited amount of monies in a plastic car. So 
can you accept that the fact that new currencies always come out when there's something more convenient and there's something to be developed to the next point? So what's wrong with the current form of money that we use? Centralization. <laughs> it's based on a central network. Oh, somebody's using hard words. Oh, good job. What's wrong with having a centralized model? Somebody in the audience members saying, could, uh, it's too slow of a supply. You were right about you were right about the centralized point. It's like the central bank can is able to create the amount of money whenever and however much they want at any point in time. Let's say back in the day, the dollar was actually not a fiat money, but it was linked as a promissory note to the amount of gold that is stored at its facility. That facility is now what we call a bank, and every type of dollar that I use was a promissory note linked to the exact amount of gold that is being reserved. So that's why it was a gold reserve promissory note. And that was the origins of a dollar. So that's why that paper, you were basically carrying out a paper that had a promissory note to represent the value of the gold that you have reserved at the bank that was too hairy to carry around. So, however, President Nixon to win against during the war in Vietnam, he needed more money. And to do that, he basically broke that form and made it into a fiat money that is no longer in a certified form of currency tied to a, a bank system of gold reserve, but a form of a central bank where the country promises the value of the money. So then after that one, before that point, the entire world was based on this idea of dollar to gold, but one that dollar to gold was decoupled after, and that is why after, especially the Lehman Brothers crash, when a lot of dollars were printed, what happened to the value of the US dollar? It crashed along as well. So let's talk about currency though, this dollar that is. First, it needs to have the form of, of transitional value and conserved value, this value, but what if this value keeps going down? So then this conserved value, the value that you keep an asset becomes no longer an equity or liquid asset that you want to own because the government keeps printing the US dollar. So, so a lot of people, as they saw, especially during COVID, that inflations would be imminent. They needed a new methodology of currency that the value can be better preserved than the US dollar. And that became the basis of Bitcoin. Okay, uh, to, 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 if to know cryptocurrency, you have to understand gold. So I told you, big cryptocurrency is like digital gold, but let's think about gold. It's actually really hard to carry gold around to use as a currency. It's too heavy. You can't break it down into smaller pieces easily. And those shortcomings of gold, Bitcoin completely covers all the shortfalls of it. It has, it's, it has a finite amount. There's a specific amount of Bitcoin available, just like how there's a specific amount of gold in the world, but you can so easily transact in Bitcoin. You can send all across the world without any heavy trend, uh, heavy infrastructure cost. It has basic, Bitcoin has all the positives of what gold has, but it has none of the shortfalls of gold. That is why Bitcoin has become the new gold. And who certified this information? What, ha what was the point of? When was the point that was certified? It was the COVID economy. Because during COVID economy, we had to make the economy a little bit more stable and relaxed. Normally, what would happen is each country will basically print more and more money and spread it out. But if you keep printing more money and put it out into circulation, so if you keep creating the amount of, amount of dollar or any type of currency, what happens to the value of that currency? It goes down. So because the value of the, of the currency that I own keeps going down, going down, what do people do to maintain their assets? They move that asset into a different form that can maintain in a form that can be maintained its value. And so what do people do? They couldn't trust government bonds. They couldn't trust US dollars. And so where did they go to? To cryptocurrency 
Do you know what the current price of Bitcoin was during COVID-19? It went up to 67,000 US dollars, while the price of gold actually went down. What's the reason for that? As I told you, it's because the principles of supply and demand is exactly the same. The supply, back in the day, a lot more gold was being mined, but now the, the amount of amount of gold that is being mined is actually dropping. It's, it's, it's not just about maybe four times the size of a football stadium, and that is in circulation right now. And perhaps the final one, the fifth stadium is right now still unmined underneath the Earth's core, but there's still more and more people who look for gold because why? It's, it's a symbol of wealth and it is a symbol of money. So that's why throughout the history, the price of gold went up. And, but there's also one more reason the value of gold went up. It's because the value of the dollar or the money to buy the gold also went down. But what about Bitcoin? So in the very beginning, you could mine 50 Bitcoins, even just a very simple computer. But nowadays, you need a super computer just to mine a little bit of Bitcoin. So it's much harder to mine the Bitcoin because the mining, keeps, mining rate keeps dropping. Every four years, that amount goes through a halving. So it was 50 blocks 14 years ago. This halving happens every time a specific amount of Bitcoin. So from 50 to 25, 25 to 12.5, and right now 6.5, and maybe and in a couple of years, it's only going to be three Bitcoin. And after that, only 1.25. And by 2030, out of the full amount of Bitcoin that can be mined, 99.5, 9% of Bitcoin will be fully mined by 2030. So it has the same principles of gold as Bitcoin has, but, but because it, it can be, have this form of principle of supply and demand, the price of Bitcoin keeps going up. So then why does the value of money, our fiat money keeps going down while more and more people are interested in cryptocurrency like Bitcoin? <laughs> Do you know what one country in the world that actually accepted Bitcoin as a form of legal tender? El Salvador did yesterday from the news. There was news that that one of its neighboring countries will also accept Bitcoin as legal tender, Honduras. Venezuela, inflation in Venezuela is absolutely insane. To buy just a piece of bread, you basically need a handful of money because the value of money is completely next to none. So what does he want to do? He wants to make Bitcoin as a legal tender. Even IMF, the International Monetary Fund Organization, said no to this. Even the people said no, but they, they made it happen anyways. So to the, he basically distributed a specific amount of Bitcoin to everybody in, in the country. That's the type of... So then a month ago, a month ago, one gallon of gas to put one gallon of gas you needed let's say a hundred dollars but a month later because of inflation you need a hundred and ten dollars to fill up a tank of gas this is what inflation is but on, on contrary a month ago in, in to buy one gallon of tank of gas i i needed 0 0.1 bit but to buy the same amount of gas later i needed less 0 0.09 bit. Why? Because the price, the value of Bitcoin went up. So then the problem about all the fiat money right now is inflation. Even if COVID ends from now on, inflation will continue to rise. So was there inflation before COVID? Yes, it was about 2% though before COVID. But after COVID, it's going to be a much higher percentage because the value of money will continuously drop. So a lot of people will try to move their assets into something of a safer form. And out of that, one of a certified way to do so is blockchains, Bitcoin, and more and more of us will do so. So you to understand Bitcoin, you have to understand gold and to, you need to understand Bitcoin to understand KOK -OK coin. It's no longer a token it's a coin and we need we can understand this by understanding the three golds right here and 
what is this? Why should we know that? Because we love blockchain. Because Bitcoin, it's it's we, there's almost no technology behind no blockchain technology behind this one. But the coin that comes out nowadays is really explaining the the basis of of the blockchain. It really has its principles lying deeply in the technology of blockchain while keeping the same principles of supply and demand that gold had, that Bitcoin had. And that's why this is what all the cryptocurrency makers right now are dreaming of. But did you know their, their hopes and their dreams, are there places that actually achieve their dreams? No, so far none. This, this is probably the trial phase, perhaps growth pains of cryptocurrency world. What is the greatest invention of man? What do we call it? The internet, isn't it? Back in the day, it was fire. But nowadays in our modern world, we say internet was the greatest invention. But even internet, in the when it was first funded back in the early 90s, it, a lot of people were negative against it. It's like, oh, this makes no sense. But now, now that has been over 10 years since it came out, it, there are still people against this idea of the internet, but all technology is always the same story. Like the smart smartphone that you guys utilize nowadays, we call it IoT, Internet of Things. And let's go here. And it's been 15 years since we have this technology in our hands. And now it's only now it's being utilized in our daily lives. All the technologies until today had this exact same point of having these trial in there and growth pains. And in that process, there's always some scammers and fraudulent players to always take advantage of the changes and scam and fraud a lot of people. Like, oh, these type of coins will become the next biggest coin. Why don't you buy this? Why don't you buy that? Is there any other coin here that you actually succeeded on? With that kind of, and in that kind of environment, two and a half years ago, KOK was one of its player who was born two and a half years ago and had to play amongst that. You can imagine the hardship there was. I'm going to give you all the logistical data from today, all the objective data. So I'm going to try to explain to you so that you can all agree on it. So right now, the closed beta for mainnet is happening. And we're trying out the transaction fees, getting collecting the gas fees for all the transactions. And this, this is going to go on for about a month. So by next month, we will probably launch the open beta. This mainnet that has been developed for so many years has finally had a chance to actually go out into the hands of all users. And this is becoming the true point in time in history of KOK. You'll be able to see the time in time where the KOK token will become a KOK coin. And you'll be able to actually see utilizing that mainnet of utilizing the KOK and actually confirm, prove the technology. I am telling you as fact, will with your own eyes, you'll be able to see how the actual ecosystem and how the company does its business. You will be able to see it with your own eyes. Now it's no longer about a question of asking, do you believe this? Do you not? We don't even need to ask this question anymore. If the mainnet becomes true, then of course, technology will be proven. And if we have the proven technology, then a lot of exchanges will want to see us with more interest. Back in the day, we used to have what we call an initial coin offering, where before a mainnet is created by a cryptocurrency company, they would have a coin offering. And with that asset, they will create their own mainnet. And they will try to list on, on even large major exchanges. But a lot of these companies that did these initial coin offerings actually crashed. Why did that happen? Even though they had their own mainnet, why did their price not be accepted to the world? Why are the prices of those companies that have their own mainnet crashing down? It's because they don't have the community, the user, the ecosystem of the fully established coin. Literally, they spent so much money to develop the coin, but they didn't invest anything to actually have an ecosystem of users. The proper step of, of a cryptocurrency company should be of developing 
the mainnet after having the basis, the users and the ecosystem so that when mainnet is ready, users can be utilized. This is the model of success. But even let's say, look at us, even before we have our mainnet, we have 10 of the major uh, of the major exchanges already lists our coins up there. And if we have our own mainnet, what will happen? More and more exchanges will ask us to be listed onto their exchanges. And you yourself, the users, this is a function I want to tell you. Oh, it's not about, oh, I can't do the calculations. No, you can just like looking at the transaction list at a bank transaction list that you have. It's exactly the same. You with your own eyes, you'll be able to see and verify that the company is making money to see its source of income in the past until now, perhaps right now too, but KOK, K Stadium, a lot of people, there were two big words that were always going against us. The first one was, oh, I don't know where its source of income is. Where is this business revenue? And the second one was, this is just a multi-level marketing scheme. Those were the two big antis against K Stadium. But as we changed it to K Stadium, we literally completely got rid of those two notions. We're free from those. How, why? Because until now, yeah, until now, oh, it, we are not a multi-level marketing, as what the Koreans will say. Oh, actually, because in Korea, there are those, those MMM. What we say here, it's about selling something so that another level selling part is made. A lot of people were basically putting up against this measuring stick of a ruler of MLM. But we, as you know, okay, okay, we don't sell anything. We don't receive money. So then we said, this is why it's not MLM. But, oh, you know, because you guys have different level factors, then because your profits are matched with that, then that's why you guys are MLM. And that's the type of names that we were receiving. But with its big launch of mainnet, we basically scrapped those entire model. So now we're just a referral marketing. It's just you and the referrer. And, and for, for all the levels below that, it's basically putting them all together and based on their total volume. So now it's all up to all level two. It's basically finding a refer, referral and referee. It's no longer MNM. So we fixed that issue. The second one, what was it? A lot of people were saying like, hey, you guys don't have any good contents. Where are you making all this money? Where is this source of income? And how how is the company creating this money? So a lot of people were saying, oh, then because we can't see that type of income, then it's the Ponzi scheme because you're basically circulating money. And we try to explain to them, we're not giving you money. We're giving you a token, a token. That, and that token, it's already fully made. Um, we're basically giving, distributing a token that has a no apparent value, but through putting it into a supply, demand, and into an ecosystem of usage, we're actually changing a token with no value to a token with value. Learn the method of token economy. But we explained that. And what did they say? Oh, I don't understand what a token economy is. So this is why when they tried, they, they didn't try to understand, which is why they just blatantly objected it against the idea. But now, so now it's easy to tell them the token economy because you can actually see the transactions with your own eyes. Scan it. See, can't you see where you see the verified source of income of K Stadium? The one thing that always, those two things that always grab their ankles to go forward. Now it's completely, we've gotten rid of them. And through that, perhaps it's the most important at the bottom, which says completion of a sustainable economic structure. And to understand this, you have to understand what a D app is, a decentralized app. Remember I told you applications on the cell phone? D, what does D? Decentralized app. That's what a DAP is or D app. Decentralized applications. It could be games, contents, anything that can be literally utilized inside a blockchain. All of those apps that can run inside a blockchain is called a DAP. And this DAP, we're going to make them use our chain, the Ether chain, the Ethereum chain, ERC20 chain, 
right now all of the companies, most of the companies are utilizing the ERC-20. But what if we have technology that is faster than Ethereum and has the transacting ability that is faster than Ethereum and cheaper transaction fees? But let's say if you create a new token, would you say the KOK chain is something a better model for you than the Ether chain? Which one would you choose? Why don't you put it on a scale? But Ethereum, but right now they use from a POW method, they're changing into a POS method, but right now they can only reach maybe 20 TPS transaction per second. And Bitcoin is about seven transaction per second. But what if to make it into a usable feature in our deal uh, on our daily life, it's got to be on par with like Visa card and MasterCard. Visa card and MasterCard, their TPS, do you know how much it is? It's about 20,000 TPS, give or take a little. But for us, across the world, we have the fastest 15,000 TPS certified speed in international standards. We're not just saying this with our own world. Uh, international standard certified speed of 15,000. And right now we are trying to achieve 100,000 TPS and then up to 1 million TPS as well in the future. So let's say we have speeds, world top tier speed level, and we have the technology. What's there left? It's gas fees. Why is it called a gas fees? When you, when you drive uh, to fill up your car, where do you go? Where do you go? to get ga gas, gas station, right? This, to have a transaction from point A to point B, we do require fuel and that's what we call it a gas fee for that transaction to be made. And for a blockchain network, this is how they make money. This gas fees is their source of income. And right now, Ethereum's gas fees per transaction is about $50, for 40 US dollars. It's extremely expensive. So, and more and more traffic, if there's more demand, it's gonna be even more expensive. How much is going to be ours? The cheapest in the world on that level, it's cheaper than Solana, it's cheaper than Luna, cheaper than Quantum, with the faster speed than all the main nets out there and with the cheap 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 price of 10 cents per transaction that's going to be our gas fees yes so, so then what did you say like oh then can we actually see the numbers something more objective so right now it's all uh, we received all our mining rewards once a day but from now on you'll receive them 24 times a day every hour you'll be calculated and you'll see that why why do we break it down to 24 times where you could only receive it once a day because 24 times every time a transaction is made then because every time a transaction is made it is being given to the user so that's basically two dollars a day So we want to make sure that what the other D apps that utilizes, because this is not a technology that we only us are going to use. It's a technology that we want everybody else to want to use, just like how we are borrowing Ethereum's technology. And to do that, we had to lower the gas fees. So what should we do? Why don't we break it down? Instead of having one large gas fee, something small per hour, 10 cents. So why don't we calculate how much money the company will make through our users? So it's 10 cents times 24, because it's, and then multiply that by 365 days. Let's do that. Let's do the math. There's a lot of accounts, but how many active users are there? Active users, that's what we want to know to make the calculation. It's about, it's about 700,000 people. And if we do that math, even that alone is something in the trillions in revenue per year. And this is just if we're saying our users, 
So every because and where do and this is just when we receive our mining rewards. What about the other transactions that we do, like when we use a payment system, or when we send the payment, or when we exchange the KOK coin? Every time we basically move our form of KOK in any way, that incurs a gas fee. So if you actually do the math to think about what will happen with just the users alone, the company will be able to make three trillion ones, which is roughly one billion US dollars, uh, three billion US dollars per year only in revenue. So this is why we're saying we're just getting started with 700,000 users. What if we have more and more? What if we have a million users, 10 million users, 100 million users, then and what will happen? Because we have some users, even the dApps will want to enter to go inside our network to have access to our users and to get inside our network. What would they need to do? They have to pay a certain fee to get inside the network. And whenever transactions that they do inside the blockchain network, they have to pay gas fees. And what will they pay the gas fees with? They'll have to buy the KOK coin out in the market and then sell it and utilize it as a utility fee to be part of the blockchain network. Just like how we buy an Ethereum outside of the exchange and then put it onto the ERC-20. It's exactly the same model. So then this revenue, how much revenue are we looking at? It's, it's astronomical. So because of that, we have completed a sustainable economic structure. Why is this important? Because you need to understand the ecosystem. Hey, hey, hey look at my phone. Look at this. Oh, wait, two and a half years. Uh, every day, not even a single day left out. I received a profit. Oh, we didn't give you incentive. Did you, did you sell something? Is it commission? A lot of people keep saying commission. It's not commission. A lot of people say it's revenue. So this is why I'm trying to create a healthy company. What, what, you didn't sell anything. We didn't sell anything. There's no commission. It's, it's not a commission based. It's not something that comes from the bottom. None of that comes out like that. Oh, because something they sold there and that goes up. No, that's, that's, that's a pyramid scheme, multi-level marketing. No, our, for us, it's the money that the company would have used for marketing expenses. Instead, they utilize that as incentives, as a referral marketing. And, and that is basically bring top down. So this, 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 not even a single day, the company skipped on redistributing the profit and the reward and incentive. No other company has done that so far. So because of that, if you say it that way, a lot of people will say, this, is, this isn't right. You shouldn't explain it. A company, you have to judge it objectively because a company, it could be a very strong company for about a hundred years, but in one moment it can crumble. Sony did that, Kodak did that. A company, it's about the question is if it actually has a sustainable economic structure. You need to understand this. And if it has that, then you can be confident. Then you can explain it to somebody like, hey, you're running out of time. Get over here. Let's do this. Let's do this. Then you can confidently say that. If it's a sustainable economic structure, is it, and does it have a structure that it has done so far? It has done well so far? No, it's about asking the question, does it actually have a structure that can be sustainable from now on? This is the question. Okay, there's a couple of new things that are going to happen with mainnet. These are some items that we'll be able to utilize and some functionalities, solutions that only companies can use. The best one that I can say is the K-Stadium bridge. What's a bridge? A bridge connects something. There's an Ethereum chain, Ethereum. Let's say there's an EOS coin with the EOS chain. And right now, these two chains are not compatible with one another. However, utilizing the K Stadium bridge created by Medium, this bridge solution, it's, it's a hardware solution, not a software. If you utilize this hardware solution, these chains, transactions can happen inter-blockchain. It's revolutionary. 
this bridging technology is already out there, but we, Medium, will be able to do it through as world's first to hardware, not software. The fact that we even have the 15,000 TPS, we are the number one world through hardware. All the other companies use a software tweak, but we utilize hardware technology to do so. Just like Microsoft Explorer, we have we have our own. We'll be able to utilize this logic in a worldwide blockchain scale. Another is as new blockchains come into us, new investment opportunities and new reward system will be able to be made. A lot of institutions, a lot of enterprises will come in, and, they, and we'll have to. Air, they will have to airdrop. They'll have to advertisement. So they have to give an incentive to the network, and that is the reason. So let me explain the next slides. So EOS and Luna, Solana, they're all the same. If there's a of you who actually understand coin, or for those who have purchased and exchanged coin before, you realize that all the institutions made took all the rewards because the, the, the institutions, the investment institutions, they don't really usually come in. But if they have a registered, a certified blockchain cryptocurrency, then the institutional investment investors come in. And looking at that, that's when the ants walk in. But who makes most of the reward? It's the institutional investments, uh, investors, institutional investors. So all type of trading uh, and all the markets that we saw, we, we noticed that the ants can never make the big bucks. But because it's always the institutional investors that take the reaps all most of the of the rewards but we're trying to change that this we have what's called a mining pool right now we have a mining pool because you have the mining rewards the ranking rewards and basic rewards so depending on how much you put a stake on just like putting a certain hold onto a bank so depending on how much you stake into the blockchain platform when with that investments and technological development for that blockchain can actually happen and to incentivize the of doing so and as a reward of doing of putting a stake on that blockchain you have received the kok token and that kok token you have received that with an APR of 48%. It's almost 50%. It's pretty high, right? And But if you refer somebody from that point on, you even get the referral bonus, a, a one to one, 100% of their, of their profits. And then on top of that, if you have actually a team from that point on, even to 15 levels below you, you, through, through, you have a level specific bonus. So it's basically a safe methodology of receiving profits. This, even main, with the mainnet launch, will continue on exactly as is. But there is now added a new pool, and we call this a community pool. And what does it mean to have a community pool? And outside of this mining pool, we have a community pool. It's basically utilizing my KOK coin inside this community pool. It's like a jar. You put it in here. You can you can put KOK coins that you've bought from the outside market or in the exchanges or even the KOK that you've mined. But but remember on our mining pool, you can you can take it out and sell it or exchange it or even terminate it. But the community pool, whatever you put it in that jar, you cannot take out. It will only be stored inside that jar. Basically, it's no, nobody can basically utilize the KOK inside that pool. So the potential amount of KOK, the potential for it to be sold outside on an exchange is completely removed. Basically, in other words, the amount of coins in circulation will go down. So what will happen to the price of the coin? What happens if you drop the amount of supply? then the price goes up, doesn't it? 
because we're continuously dropping the amount, the supply through halving, mining, so 12%, 9%, 8%, now we're at about 4%, even the rewards from, from infinite, now we're going to 15 levels. So basically, the supply of the KOK token will continuously gradually decrease. And even that, on top of that, we literally do coin burning and we get of it, rid of it outside, out of circulation. And now we are having people put that KOK in a community pool that can never be used. So the supply is dropping and the amount of money that the KOK that can be utilized in circulation goes down. But the amount of users and the methodology of using it keeps going up. Supply goes down, the users keep goes up, demand keeps going up. It's a principle of supply and demand. Can't you see it? So what will happen? The price can only go up to those people we give it as reward this is happening uh, the mining the mining pool happens and has to happen but the community pool is an optional feature you can put it in there if you want or you don't have to but as soon as you put it in there from that point on you have sacrificed something that you have to basically increase the amount of okay, okay so you have sacrificed something but everybody else who hasn't sacrificed anything they all reap on the on the benefits because the price goes up. So then you should receive some kind of reward because you sacrificed something. You're right. That is what you see here. So all of the transaction fees is distributed for people who have taken part of the community pool. And there's more. As the mainnet comes live, we'll have inflation coin. It's quite a lot actually per year. It's about it's about 30 million KOK coins out back in circulation. And that will be given out to the community pool. There's also investment rewards. What is that? As we have more and more users, more dApps will come in to utilize our blockchain to bring their own contents into their enterprises. And these institutions will come in and they will want to do business with our users because that's what a platform is. If there are users, that's why the sellers come in. Right. So then to us, they have to appeal to us. So they have to put some advertisement. So just like how, if we are going to go into a new exchange, we have to airdrop a specific amount of specific amount of KOK, just like that. It's basically an open opening marketing business. It's like how we have a, an opening gift, right? And these people who will be utilizing our technology to open up their business there, they're going to airdrop into our network. And this airdrop, this will be all distributed to the people part of the community pool as a reward so should you do it or should you not do it we should right yes we should so then how this community pool is active is really depending on how how much success the kok will have i'll say that one more time the success of the kok coin is very reliant on how active the community pool is so now there's a few companies that gives mining rewards like EOS they give so here they use a POS met method and they put they decentralize that and they have a DPOS method you should go on Google and uh, study these terms DPOS or DPOS this is actually an evolved form and we are actually putting a patent on this we are going to put a ranking bonus and we put the basic rewards as separate why because because we can't just give away the rewards to people who own the most what we call whales even to the people who participate in community pool but has a small share into the pool should still receive reward and because of that we made this new model so if you put if you put so if you put 50, you get rewards out of that 50. If you put 100, then you get rewards based on the 100. And that's what the basic reward. And depending on which node you're at, you could have 50 nodes, 100 nodes, 200 nodes. That's up to the 12th, they get 20%. The first gets out of the 20%, they get the 30%. And, and between the first and second, they get a 30% difference as well. And the second and third difference, they'll get another 30% difference. So basically, as higher you rank, you basically get more reward. This is up to the 12th ranking. 
and ranking from the sixth to the sixth, first to sixth is a mining reward. So let's do the math. So let's say in one node, I, I went inside a community pool and, and I really want to at least rank 12th, but I don't have that kind of, of KOK to do so. Then what I do is I basically give a, a, have give that delegation to somebody else. That's what DPoS is all about. It's about investment, reward, and delegation. And this is where the DPOI comes in. So I think right now, me, Mr. Song, I have the most amount of tokens, tokens right now. And whoever, whoever can see and agree that if I put in, let's say, uh, an extreme amount of KOK into a community pool, so then why would I do that? because I really want to increase the value of KOK because through KOK, I have received all this, all your gracious gifts and the fact that I'm here is all through KOK. So how many, K, how much KOK do I have? I have a more than, somebody said, I think a billion, so I have more than that. I'm pretty sure I have the most. Oh. Even if I put, let's say, 10 million, I wouldn't put 10 million in one. I'll put it into three separate nodes and I'll put like 1 million, 2 million, 1 million. Uh, of course, it wouldn't be under my name, but everybody can see, they'll be able to see. You can see the nicknames. Oh, you can see, oh, from where, how much came in? Because it's on a blockchain, it's an open network that people see. Ah, oh, so if you think, oh, this is Mr. So, then you can give me the delegation power. So, and if you do so, and let's say that became number one on that day, then you get part of the reward system of the day. So there are days that you can participate and days that you don't have to participate. So basically this is open to everybody and you'll realize that people will keep always keep an eye and these community polls are active. And as the polls become more active through our frontiers, it will bring in the institutional investors. And if you get, so before, only the time before the institutional investors come in, that's the real time where us, the small frontiers, the ants can really make and take advantage of the community pool. So you must rush. There's one more. In this community pool, let's say you've taken part of it. And let's say you, uh, so because those coins don't have a chance to come out of the exchanges, the value of the coins went up. But what, what do we do with the amount of KOK that is inside that pool? I actually wanted to start a scholarship foundation. I wanted to start one uh, um, of a 10 billion uh, one worth of scholarship foundation. And, uh, but I wanted to do like a Song Ka Byung Scholarship Foundation. I actually wanted to do a KOK Scholarship Foundation, but it seemed like, oh, people were perhaps doubting that it was some kind of, of, of way that the company was doing something. So I wanted to do a Song Ka Byung Scholarship Foundation. So what did the KOK say? Why don't you do that? But just wait till where the community pool comes out because it'll be completely independent out of KOK's foundation's call. Whatever is in that community pool can be utilized for specific purposes. Be the number one in the node and, and basically put up an opinion saying, let's utilize this money in the community pool to create a scholarship foundation. So then everybody in the community pool will vote. As long as we get majority, 51% of the vote, then we basically start a scholarship foundation with those KOKs. And that is basically done by deciding, by the voting. And the KOK Foundation has complete no say. And what do we call this? A decentralized autonomous organization. DAO. D-A-O. D decentralized autonomous organization. This is what blockchain is all about. Even the foundation is out of here. The entire governance, all the decision is made by the people in the network, in the node, in the community pool. It is our decision to the delegates. That, isn't this exciting? In America, let's say somebody made a, a new movie and, and they, they, they made the blueprints of the, the director's cut. It, it looks like uh, Squid Game number two. And somebody in the node says, hey, 
they put up an opinion on the note. Hey, let's put a vote. Why don't we, if we get 51% and part of this community pool, let's invest into this new movie. And if we have returns of profits to the investment, that profit is distributed to the people of the community pool. So of course, investments could go wrong, but it's going to be a very interesting story because the foundation will never interfere in the decision-making process. It's a completely decentralized autonomous organizations. You will continuously hear this term DAO more and more in our future world. Something interesting is, so I've been doing this for about two years and a half. I'm not the first person that started this actually. I actually started a bit late. I just became the top. And because that means that even if you start late, I want to show you that you can't be the top of the world. But about two years and a half, at, at, at what we talked about back then was NFT, metaverse, uh, virtual city, DAO, words like that. Now it's really coming up just a little bit to the people and to the public. Now, it's, well, we were already talking about that two and a half years ago. There's still people who think that these words are completely out of context and conceptual. But so can you imagine how we were taken on when we utilized these words two and a half years ago? You guys, how are you guys going to do that? You guys going to beat Google? How? That's impossible. You guys are going to beat Netflix? <laughs> Why don't you scam lightly? Those were the words that we received when we started. And here we are. Uh, why don't we reorganize our thoughts? So I've explained everything about the mining pool, right? This is based on US dollars. It can, it can grow stably, it has a stable growth. You can do it by yourself. You can invest by yourself. If you refer somebody, you get referral bonus. And if that person, whatever they profit, you get the same amount of profit, 100%. And if they refer somebody, then from that point on, you get a level reward bonus. And that's a way of becoming a big business. It's a stable growth model, but let's say a community pool model in here. All the mining rewards, the ranking, and the basic rewards, all of it will be distributed in. It's very important here to note, it's not under the US dollar concept, it's based on KOK quantity. It's super important, but based on quantity. And in here, it's not a stable growth, it's about strategy and tactics. Even giving dele a delegate, picking a delegate for you is also strategy. It's going to be an interesting next step. I really want you to take advantage of this on its early form and stage. So it's a bit theoretical, but why don't I say this? So, so let's say I put a hundred of my coins in the community pool. And let's say the gas fees that came in today was about 10,000 of it. So it could be, right? So and later, let's say when the transactions closed, nobody came into the community pool. I'm the only person who put a hundred. All of that 10,000 KOK that came from gas fees, transaction reward bonus, all of it is mine. I basically received 10,000 of it by putting in a hundred. This is what's important about the KOK quantity. As soon as you put the KOK inside the community pool, the value of the KOK goes up. But even if you put 100 and only receive 100, the amount of KOK, the value of KOK when you put it in and the amount of KOK that you receive, the value at that point is different. There'll be more. So we basically created a new way of creating profits. And with that, through the decentralized blockchain, majority will come out. We'll have an NFT marketplace, games, new digital contents, metaverse, AR city, shopping. All of service solutions will be part and inside our mainnet. What is this? So now we just need more users. So then for that point, we'll make more money through gas fees. And even on top of that, even the revenue that we get from the platform is finally created. So a lot of people said, hey, you guys don't have any good contents. How do you guys call yourself a digital content platform? That itself is a scam. Right now, the contents that is being serviced by our network, it's all contents that we bought. We just tried to create a space foundation, I told you. Yeah, because we are a content platform, so we have to appear as a content platform. But 
but why do we need to buy content platforms? No, content should be coming into our platform. They should be con putting a contract to get into a platform. This is what a platform business. Why wouldn't they come in? Why, why do we have to keep buying these? Why do you think? Because we have a low amount of users. But if, but let's say even the users that we already have right now, and through, through our users just alone, we have humongous gas fees. More and more, we'll have more users. And more users means more suppliers, the developers come in, and then we get more supply. More and more will mean more. And as this happens, even though right now when mainnet hasn't been live, we were able to see a, a value increase to almost 5,000%. Even if the price that dropped recently a little bit, we're still at an increase of 5,000. It's basically a 40 times increase. And, and this is not a story about us. This is an objective piece. Last year, in 2021, there were about a thousand coins that were listed and we were ranked 31st out of the six, out of the 68 coins that had a price increase of more than 1000%. And what's important to know about a coin is we are a payment coin. And you shouldn't just be looking at the price that has. You should be looking at the current amount and the transaction volume. Last year, there was an article that says that the amount of KOK being transacted, the volume beat CRO, which is crypto.com's main form of cryptocurrency. This is all happening before mainnet is coming out, and we're already having these kind of results. Why don't we look at this? Transacting token. This number one payment token, this is our dream. Why don't we look at that in its actual fruition form? Look at this video. We basically acquired the nine company, a kiosk making company, and this kiosk are spread all across the world. In here, you can actually utilize KOK as a payment form. As you can see, it's already done. So you turn on your smartphone, you scan the QR code and right away, you can pay. And I told you with this fast transaction per second, you don't have to wait. Receipts are already out. So around you in New York and New Jersey, let's say you do a cafe or a restaurant or a hair salon. Have this kiosk there. You'd be so happy. What is this? What is this? People will ask. Per perhaps this is something I heard recently. If I have this kiosk, if I let's say I put this kiosk here, there's a price for the kiosk, right? There's models where we can provide this for free or price per pay. I basically have to pay for the kiosk and put it there. So then th there's a transaction fee that comes out, just like how you're utilizing a Visa card and you pay a transaction fee. And part of that, you will be able to receive it. Those are some rumors I've been hearing. Of course, each country and each city will be a bit different and we haven't set the regulations yet, but it's going to be very interesting. These are the exchanges that we are currently listed upon. Gate.io, KuCoin, literally world's top of course, some rankings institutions will rank it differently, but in coin market cap, you will always see KuCoin and Gate.io at least on the top 10, top seven of the cryptocurrency exchanges. So to understand the coins, the fundamentals of a coin, there's something interesting that you need to note. But the easiest way to check is, is basically to see the fundamentals behind the coins to ask where, where is it listed on? Oh, it's, oh, it's on Huobi? Oh, wow. So then... Oh, that's a, if it's listed on Hobbit, then it's a certified. Then, but you have to look very carefully. Is it Huobi Global or Huobi Korea or Huobi Indonesia? Just because it's on Huobi, listed on Huobi, it's not the same Huobi. There is a place that it's only listed in Korea, only in Indonesia. It's very easy to be listed on these local exchanges. You have to look at the global, international, major exchanges. Are they listed there? Is the coin listed there? That's what you should be looking at. These are the exchanges at the top tens of the world. And you need to be 
pass through an intense amount of procedure just to be listed there. Listed there. And Indodex, I think there are about worlds 50 or 30. Why do we put there? Why do we put KOK there? They actually asked us to put, put KOK there. Uh, in the beginning, the foundation said, no, we don't want to do it because we have to pay maintenance fee to have our things there. So, But we realized Indonesia had the KOK token as a home shopping channel methodology of currency. So it was worth it. And we like countries with lots of potential users. We're not a foundation that likes countries with lots of money. We like countries that had lots of users and potential for users. So that's why to get into the Indonesian market. So at the biggest Indonesian cryptocurrency exchange we wanted there. And Hopit is the top 50. We didn't put ourselves. They actually did an unauthorized listing of our of KOK. Bitcoin and Ethereum. Do you think exchanges, uh, does Bitcoin and Ethereum go to the exchanges and say, please list us? No. Every exchange is basically unregistered list Bitcoin and Ether. And just like that, they unauthorized listed the KOK on Hotbit and, and, and Mongol and Vietnam. And, and in three, it was basically a natural listing. And like if this coin, oh, our coin is a natural listed coin. Already three of the exchanges listed us naturally. If if you can say this to somebody and they realize that, then they they will realize this in their head. They'll say, if an exchange were able to do their due diligence to list your coins, that means your coin is certified. Bitrix, GoCoin, Bitcoin, VGG. These are all the exchanges that list KOK, even though we don't even have our main nets. And, but now we are really talking amongst these guys down here, the logos down here, where we're talking closely. We're actually already gone through all of the certification process. It's just about timing now. Where is this? Binance. Would it be able to go on this year? I think we will. No, no, I, I hope it will. Because if I say it will, then I, the entire world puts that and, and puts it on an article. So I'm going to just say calmly, I, I'm i pretty sure I'm right, but I am going to wish it goes here. Where is this place? OKEX. Where is this? Bitfinex. If you know this one, that means you, you, you probably lost a bit of money, haven't you? Where is this? Where is this? Coinbase. In, in the Fo Forbes basically listed Coinbase as number one cryptocurrency exchange in the world. And Coinbase is in the US, right? If KOK is listed here, wow, that would be amazing. I really wish that actually happens. <laughs> Uh, there must be a reason why I keep pointing at this, right? Okay. So it keeps going back and forth around $5. So a lot of people who, who are against us will say like, oh, oh, Bitcoin and Ethereum goes down. How is Kyoko not going down? That's why it's a scam. If, if I hear that, then you're probably right. And they're probably right. If a coin chart, just like Bitcoin and Ethereum, it should go up and down. It should go up and down, up and down. And this is the natural way. But for KOK, it kept kept to have this step ladder keep going up. In a in a general form of chart wise, KOK then is a hundred percent scam. They they do have the right to say that. However, but what they don't understand is the the KOK platform token economy base of the KOK. It's the, because there's a platform base and a market price. The, 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 the platform price and the market price actually secure each other and keeps it say, stable. If the market price goes up, then the platform goes up. If the market price goes down, then people will buy from the market and put it into the platform. So then demand decreases. So it maintains itself. It's almost like a, it's a balancing scale. It's kind of like maintaining the ship leveled. 
there is literally no other company that uses the same principle. And without knowing that, if they just look at the chart, then they see, oh, this is 100% a, uh, a rigged market. Rigged market? Come on, look at these volumes that are being traded right now. It's impossible to be a rigged market. Already the foundation has completely lost control of these volumes. This is not, it's already more than 10, six, 60 billion transactions per 60 billion KOK being traded. So you need to understand these things before saying such a thing. So then for us, for mainnet, as of next month, it will, it will be operated live. So KOK's history, before mainnet and after mainnet, it will be a completely different story. The game has a new start now. So from my speeches in Korea, this is what you say. Oh, this was an open game we did till now. And this is the main game from now on. This is the main game. Even C CTO, Mr. Choi, and he would say something like this. This was just a game done by the amateurs till now. From now on, it's where the professionals play. This is the true stadium. Somebody asked to Dr. CTO, Mr. Mr. Che, how, how far have we progressed? And doc, Dr. Che, even without breathing right away, he said, I know I designed this and engineered this, but as, I think we've only been 2% in progress. As much as, I don't think it's more than 4 to 5%. That's what he said. We've only gone to 2% so far, our progress. So two and a half years ago, we, we wanted to create 100 million users. But how are we at already? We're at 700,000. So even if we get 1 million, we're still at 1%. Oh, he's about right then. We're just getting started. After mainnet, this is going to be the big change. This is the real start. So then this platform, with, with what kind of logic, with, with, with what kind of functionality, what kind of operation, it is going to become the economic backbone. So let's compare the companies. So all the companies in before, they had paid models, but if you look at the companies, the big companies on the early 21st centuries, that most of their services are free to use. Google's, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Alibaba, they all have free users. So what does this mean? So that means the companies that changed the economies in our in our current economy was having service models where they were based to free, 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 freemium to users. So and how were they making money? It was really the data from all the users that was being used. And to basically change this uh, flow of economy, all the stars from Silicon Valley, Israel, and Berlin, what are they preparing? They're trying to prepare the next step of, of a service where it's not based on a free service, but it's giving some kind of favor or incentive to people, users that uses the platform or the company services the most. So to keep the company and beforehand, we sold shares to the investors to utilize that to create more developments and to profit. But now on the startups that are going to come out these days, the investors are no longer important. It's the users that's important. The company's growth is based on the users within a platform. So we need we need the users to play and utilize. This is what's necessary. So, uh, so then they basically give away cryptocurrencies to the people. Oh. I think this guy's just here just to talk about KOK, isn't it? So let me describe to you this chart right here. In the past, these kind of enterprises or companies to buy their products, I had to pay the company. And it was obvious, right? But now, a platform in the platform economy we're in, 
to utilize this platform, it's actually free to use the platform. There's no fee to use the platform. Whenever you buy something there, you give some money. So it's a free model, but but the people who made this platform are the, are, are the Amazon, Uber, Facebook, and Airbnb, or their YouTube. And to increase, and who is actually increasing their profits? It's our users. Who's making the money? Only the platforms are making the money in this model. In Facebook, on YouTube, who puts the contents up there? We put them up. Who watches them? We watch them. Well, we're doing everything, but who makes all the money? Mark Zuckerberg makes all the money. This is the platform economy. And it's a basically centralized figure, unfair. But in a utilizing a blockchain platform, it's basically the basis of a protocol economy. It's so that giving and sharing the assets and value to the users that are part of the community. This is what the basis of a protocol economy. To be a protocol economy, that economy, that society has to be open, democratic, transparent, and public. And to do to be so, in it requires a technology that matches that. And what is that technology? Blockchain. So the, the philosophy on blockchain. And if you want to put blockchain technology in one word, it's credibility. The, the one word to describe blockchain technology is protocol economy, is a fair distribution of wealth. This is a very important philosophy. And to make this happen, so to make this economy possible, it's because they use a token as a method of currency. And what do we call that? We call that a token enemy, to get a specific behavior. What kind of behavior? Not a forced behavior, but a chosen action or chosen behavior. It's not about, it's not saying forcing somebody to do it. It has to be a chosen action. And when, and if that is being made, then you are rewarded and receive a reward or a token of appreciation. So let's say Bitcoin is the same. Let's say to go a POW model of Bitcoin. Let's say you go in there, you go inside a node to, to be part of the Bitcoin network and to make the Bitcoin network bigger, right? And you utilize your big, big computer to do so. Nobody forced them to do so, but they do it. I go inside a network and as part of the network, and because I've made that network more strong, and bigger, I am rewarded as a Bitcoin. And that's exactly what a token economy is. That's what Bitcoin is. And in other words, with cryptocurrency, I stake or I participate in the KOK ecosystem. If the KOK ecosystem becomes bigger by staking into the blockchain platform that is the KOK chain, then you are you receive a reward or a token of appreciation of doing so. And from what you receive as reward, you can shop it in here, game in here, you can go travel. Yeah, you can basically utilize it or, or if you don't want that, you want to cash. I want to just keep the coins in the exchanges or I want to cash out and utilize it as my daily expenses and go ahead and do so. So in that exchange, as people buy and sell, buy and sell, that the value of its potential circulation goes up. Or you can also put it into a redistributed model, restake model into the economy. This is a token economy. If one person does this, if one person becomes two, 200 person, 400 person, 200 million people, as more people do that, we get a network effect. And this is McAlf's law. It's, it's a law based or a principle based on a network network service or a, a technological network to create a first connection between two nodes or two, uh, one connection between two devices. The infrastructure cost is high, but as you increase the amount of nodes inside the network, the cost for infrastructure to create it actually goes down. Marketing fee goes down, advertisement fees goes down. And as the network goes up, it's exactly the same as what I mentioned before. As the risk for the company goes down, marketing fee and an advertisement fee goes down, infrastructure cost development fees goes down, 
what happens at the end the, the reward for tokens goes down i told you before the mining kyok token keeps going down the supply goes down and the kyok token is the same right but as it does that what happens the demand goes up and as the demand goes up and as a principle of supply and demand the value goes up but this is the important part of the to create 10 network to make it a hundred let's say that's a 10 times difference so then the the effect of the network is not 10 times its value the value of the network didn't go up by by 10 times it actually went up by 10,000 just because a hundred became a thousand it didn't go up by 10 times it actually 10 10 squared that's the increase in value of, of of the network as it grows and as the users keep going up so that is why our value of kok went up four thousand percent five thousand percent as you saw so to basically block all the negativity against uh, to block all the unfair centralized monopoly that the content platforms had all across the world we created kok and because we had this unfairness of where the contents were being made in korea but the riches were made outside right so we wanted to make a different platform a more fair platform and to do so we need a technology that can be fair that's blockchain to utilize fiat money governed money we cannot beat them so we're not going to use that we're going to use cryptocurrency so like that with that alone so these other platforms they cannot block our ips but but blockchain actually can protect us from 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 fraudulent activities and blockchain is a platform that is democratic i can specifically see how much the content that i made made money how the transaction was made google netflix and other platforms you cannot see it. it's a closed system but a blockchain network you can see it all it's an open transparent democratic platform as in the transaction happens instantaneously as soon as something that upon the blockchain has been made as transaction it is being done and put into the wallet of the person that deserves it El Salvador that I mentioned before, 70% of the population of El Salvador don't have a bank account. They don't use a governed form of banking institution. So even the people of South America and in Africa, they have cell phones, but they don't have institution uh, uh, governed versions of financial institutions. But what do they use? They use DeFi decentralized financial technology now they can do that so all of this who's moving all these things that i just mentioned it's medium the company medium well how do you how do you say it M medium medium which means faith in korean and what did i say really represents blockchain technology credibility trustworthy you know how do we say that we, well, how do we can we see how can we say it in another word it's faith medium it's from the word media it's to be the meat to let the world know of the philosophy behind blockchain and um from there is from ethereum and to beat ethereum was their goal and that's the philosophy behind medium the name The Medium Foundation acquired KOK April of last year. It's not KOK that did all this that I'm about to show you. Medium Foundation did that, but a lot of people say like, oh, Korean bank. Uh, a lot of people keep saying, it kept on emailing all the public institutions in Korea saying, oh, did Coke play sell the blockchain solution? Oh, and then they would say, no, no. What is Coke play? We don't know Coke play. And they're like, see, see, I told you, Coke play scam. I told you. We had so much feedback and backlash from there. But that's because they were wrong. We, were sa we said it was done by medium 
medium is medium is right now in charge of our platform and our technological de development to tell you specifically in, in terms of corporation they're separate entities so 15,000 TPS they were able to achieve the speeds and the international certification standard it's really world number one. And Chain Capital and Kirin Fund, find out what kind of company they are. They are venture capitalists who only invest on the success, successful models of cryptocurrency blockchain solutions. They are not the first. They are always the ones who watch very carefully and enter exactly at the critical moment. So we actually don't really need their money, though. Okay. Even if you bring $300 per person here, we don't really need their money, but, but because it seems, because it feels safe, a lot of people bring their money, lots of money in. It's actually not easy for VCs to come in. And the city of Busan, there is a innovation cluster created there and medium is right now main. And there are, do you see with this other company, NHN standing beside medium? It's Naver, Tesla, Korea. These large enterprises are being all led by medium. Perhaps the largest blockchain business center made in Korea is about to be constructed in Busan, and in this center is created to create more jobs and increase interest and industry of the blockchain sector in Korea. The city of Busan with medium Tesla Korea, they, they made an MOU with the size of 500 billion won to create a memorandum of understanding to create a new, construct a new basis infrastructure for the future of blockchain infrastructure and technologies in Busan. And outside of Medium, there are 14 other blockchain companies who will be moving their headquarters into this business center to make Busan as one of its leaders in blockchain technology, make it into a blockchain utilizing city we are investing into Busan. The company that is leading this project is Medium and they are creating the Busan Innovation Cluster and they'll be able to lead the innovation behind the blockchain solutions required by the other blockchain companies that want to utilize the blockchain technology. Uh, Mr. Kim, CEO of Medium, is saying that Medium is the blockchain technology expert company that is capable of providing the solutions to various companies that require it. The anchor is saying that the wall between reality and the metaverse is breaking down. There's a new mobile app that is about to launch that is able to bring a, all the objects on our physical world into the metaverse. And just like this, you can easily put objects in our physical world inside the metaverse. And depending on the object, it can be customized almost unlimitedly inside the metaverse. And this company that created this is called Mergerity. And as soon as uh, the, their technology is capable of to instantly augment the physical item into the metaverse. And if you put that item into the metaverse through a blockchain network, you can share it and transact it and exchange it and trade it right away and go inside the NFT market. And if you put your own creation in the blockchain network, you can share it. You can be participate on the NFT marketplace. It's basically breaking down the barriers between entering to the metaverse. Majority 
is able to merge the items that you see in the physical world and to the people in the metaverse. And so that allowing people to actively participate a sharing multiverse metaverse platform. This instant it's just kind of playing like the po Pokemon game that we saw, but it's but on the po on the Pokemon game, they basically have all the data preloaded in the data, but the uh, the majority technology that is an instant recognition technology is really a patent pending technology that allows them to instantly put new items in the metaverse that has never been tabulated before. And this also happened. Apologies, I can't really hear what it's saying. blockchain industry will be the frontier into future industries. The fact of utilizing blockchain as an unlimited potential of usage into our future industries and future sectors. It could go into hospitality, to transportation, to education, to various services, and will lead the front, the development of the industries of the future. And even South Korea will actively participate in the aid the development of more blockchain technologies so that it can be utilized in the daily lives of all the people of South Korea. <laughs> These are the various congratulatory notes. And here is Medium receiving a blockchain technology award to Foundation Medium, to CEO, Mr. Panjong Kim. So Medium and Case Stadium, the roadmap that we have, we're gonna see what kind of roadmap they have for the future. I'll see you at the Metaverse. Hello, my name is CEO of Medium, uh, uh, Panjong Kim. Uh, we have a major upgrade to KOK platform run at Medium. We call it version three. And to make it more convenient to a lot of the users up ahead, we have added lots of improvements. And through many hours of effort and development, we are finally able to bring this to the mass, to the public. And, and with lots of anticipation excitement, I'm about to show that to you. Metaverse is everywhere right now, everybody's talking about it. It's a, a keyword that everybody's mentioning. The metaverse is basically a visualization of our augmented world and emerge into our physical world. As you know, the products that we have, a lot of a lot of companies are investing heavily into the metaverse. KOK as well has been preparing this step for quite a long time. And this uh, V3 will really show the start onto the roadmap. And road to the metaverse is the one slogan what the V3 will be representing it's one step as our entry to the metaverse With, from this admit you'll be able to see three optim updates the first is the chatting feature to all the kok members you'll be able to chat with one another utilizing the blockchain methodology and through the platform you'll be able to see the kok chat and you will too and it'll be much faster and much convenient than the other chatting features that you have from before. Outside of the messenger, through the chatting feature, you'll be able to give cryptocurrencies. And this is a world number one feature from a chatting feature, says Mr. Song. The second service is the transaction service or the payment system. And we have prepared a kiosk where you can utilize KOK to do to transact and have payments to cafes and to restaurants and to various places. You'll be able to utilize the KOK authorization process as a form of payment. Now, KOK will be merging more deeply into our daily lives. 
so that the KOK business can expand even further. It is no longer a coin that you can just buy and sell from the exchange, but it will be a currency that you can actually use for your daily life and increase its value thus far. And with that, and with that, KOK will play a big role of the metaverse. And third, it's the content revamp. So the KOK is a global service provider and to become so, so movies, videos, webtoons, and other channels will be available. That in our K Stadium, much more new contents will come into K Stadium and will be in the center of the world. If you look at this picture, it seems to show it started in Korea and it spreads all across the world. That could be one rendition of this picture, but but you need to really understand what this actual picture means. A lot of companies have used this picture that I created and they use they explain it this way you know the product that we made this this beauty product we made we made it in Korea and it's going to go all across the world and this is how they use it and this is wrong this is not what I'm saying technology or product every day changes the product that comes out tomorrow is going to be better than the product that comes out today the food supplement that comes out tomorrow is going to be more effective than the one that comes out today and, and even the marketing, there's going to be new reward systems. So I think the consumers will always shop for the better deal. So how can this actually happen then? So if when I do marketing, when I make the technology, then do you think everybody else is sleeping and waiting? No, consumers are living creatures. It will never actually happen like this picture that you see. Then it's almost like a scam if you explain it that way. So then they say, then... So what about K-Stadium, KOK? Isn't it the same? What if a similar company or better comes out than one consumer's move? No, because we don't actually sell a product. We don't need consumers already. We have K-Contents users, consumers. They use Google, Netflix, YouTube. Through there, all across the world, we have users already out there of K-Contents user. And those verified consumers were saying we're not saying hey use our product versus their product that's not what we'll say we'll be saying hey you already watch k content through youtube would you rather watch youtube by paying youtube and consume k content or would you use our platform watch the k content and make money on top of that and what are we going to do to give you as incentive to participate the kok token there's no nobody who doesn't understand this we're not trying to find new consumers. So that's why this photo is possible right here. So thankfully on top, Korea is on top because Korea made it. It's a world top class level blockchain created by Korea. And the very first, first are the frontiers. They're the center of the platform. These are the Koreans. If they feel uncomfortable about the platform, okay, let them join in later as consumers, content consumers at the end. After three years, there'll be tons of content for them to enjoy. Right? Where are we right now? We're right now in the consumer profilation time. We're in the frontier time. We're, we're at the time where we have to put the flag down saying, this is my land. It's not about, it's still not the time to whine about the contents that are up there. We're still at the point in time of creating the first foundations of the profits because if we have all the frontiers done undeveloped then the contents will come in then the users will come in it's a bit different than the business of back then and don't think about the big business and don't think about it too complicated all the system is already set right now it's all being done in korea but 
through the metaverse and, and we're trying to create so that the entire global population can come in and learn about it so that we can be the first in the metaverse. And on May 2nd, I invite you all, everybody who is five levels, level five and higher can come up. We still have about a month and a half left. There's still time for us to utilize the VIP account. This account, we don't know when it will disappear because we're not a business of racking in money because this VIP has this sense of, of profiting more and we didn't like that so we're actually going to get rid of it but we have at least saved time for those who actually have reached this level so before that before that day where we disappear get to level five so they can get you know airplane ticket four days in korea a garden party at my house in korea sounds fun right my house oh it's you know it was on tv oh it was a, it was a harvest festival special you could see my house so we're studying about blockchain we're actually going to create this in an english version even the mongol version the tr translation is almost done and in the english version we have a promotional clip from futurist dr thomas Frey in the book even people around you in the English sector who speak English, this book in English, give it to them for free as a gift. And even an audiobook will come out, a Korean version, an English version, even the audiobook, give it away. We are, we are not selling anything. We don't do marketing. We only need to increase our value. A lot of our negative people against our side would say, hey, is this a business, 100% of 100% perfect business? They'll ask me and I'll say, no, it's not. But it is 99 point. It is 99% perfect. And the 1% are frontiers will take responsibility the frontiers who will stay till the end to bring this forward, to bring it forward to everybody in the ends of Africa, in the ends of South America, the ends of Southeast Asia, as they bring it in. We are the ones making this business. The user risk, depending on what we do, there might be user risk or it might become a complete sustainable future economy. But what if we utilize the frontierism and, and we one step, one step, bring it more to more and more people and bring its fundamentals, then this business will go to its stable place. We're still not there yet. And because of that, you still have a choice, chance, an opportunity to make. If you're still looking for a more stable, form of business, then join us later. We'll make it even more compact there, more stable there. But from that point on, but when you join then, you won't have a big of an opportunity as you have now. So will you go, us, go on together with the frontiers or take the fruits of our, take the fruits of our fruition? That is your choice. This 200% profit limit so this became our profit. No bank loans, no user risks. Through time and through development, through investment, there is value. So now the MLMs cannot come in. Anybody who has come in with MLM, they'll all leave. They don't match us anymore. Now, we are not a pyramid scheme. We're not an MLM company. We are not selling products. We are about creating a new future, a creating a new world, creating a new business, creating the future economy. Now we have a mainnet, world level, a high speed blockchain technology in the world top tier level. We're listed on major global exchanges. We even get support from venture capitalists. And Dr. Thomas Frey is even our technical advisor as a global futurist. And 
there was Chang Da Gyo in one of the speeches of KOK. 21 years old, he said something, but it really struck a chord with me. And he said, if Einstein recommends a math academy, you probably wouldn't question the academy's methodologies. What if, if it's a company that Thomas, Thomas Frey, Dr. Thomas Frey is a technical advisor and you shouldn't even question anything, question anything and join. Is he a coin? expert? Is he a blockchain expert? No, no. He has nothing to do about cryptocurrency and blockchain. He's about the world renowned, even Google renowned futurist. The future that Medium and K Stadium is paving matches the future that Dr. Thomas Frey sees. So what else are you questioning? Then just these three things, put it in your head then. These are only facts that are objectively true. Which is mainnet, blockchain institutional investment, and major global exchange. Are you capable of understanding the value of the company much more than a venture capitalist? Or no more, it's time to question. You're wasting time. Every hour is wasted, step by step. With the backpack, we came all here. This entire America, all the two, the two people who got the trophies, Diane, six star, Miss Song, seven star, through all the negativities, to all the taunts, two years they have struggled and took step by step. This is the war memorial that you see in the US. And this is what we're doing. We are winning against this war and putting that flag up. We put the K Stadium flag. Without this thought process, it was impossible. So that's why for us, we do not sell anything. We don't do marketing. What we do is is the branding of us, the Frontiers, and K Stadium. You can take pride in this. You all came here dreaming of the American dream, right? You came here to live well in America, right? But how are you doing now? Our level seven star, Miss Song, was an Uber driver to make her ends meet. She made 2,000, maybe three, 4,000 when she made the most per month. Can you make an American dream with that? A lot of us are struggling. So that's why we try to stay together and help each other. And because of that, it's where the MLMs and the network marketing started. Did you succeed through that? Did you make money through there? Are you in a better class now? Anybody. Any company can give you a dream and a vision. However, there, there is, hasn't been a single company who actually realized those dreams and hopes. I am not the only person who succeeded through this. Everybody who is taking part of the token economy are succeeding. It's proven facts, and it includes all of you here. KOK, K Stadium, through that, your life, my life, all of our lives, why don't we change the entire game? Good job, everybody. Thank you so very much.